Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Bible Land at Home. I'm so happy that you are here with us again this morning. If you are still waking up, quickly do some stretches. Just reach for the sky and go down for your toes and stretch and stretch. Okay, we're all awake now, so we're ready to listen to today's message and remember today's memory verse. For anybody who had a birthday, happy, happy birthday. I know we've had Bailey and we had Teague, who both had birthdays this week, so happy birthday to you too. And anybody else who we've maybe missed, happy, happy birthday. Welcome to anyone who's new as well. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoy this Bible and new format that we've been doing for quite some time. I hope that you are all keeping well and safe and that despite having to sit in our houses, which is really great with the cold that's currently hit us, this wind is not our friends, but hopefully we will be able to meet with each other again soon in person. But with that, I want to ask you all to sing really loudly to shout out the memory verse so that even us as leaders in our houses, that we can hear you and your neighbors and everyone are going to moan because you're so loud. Okay, remember that we are singing to Jesus and not for our neighbors. So let them moan. Okay, <laughs> I hope that you are all keeping safe and well and that it has been a wonderful week, be it that you're getting ready to go back to school, that you are already at school. Whatever the circumstance, I hope that it is a lovely and a calm and blessed week for you all, despite circumstance. So let's head over to our worship memory verse and message for the day then. Bye! I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a super duper Sunday so far and I also hope you're ready to learn your memory verse for this week. 
Now our memory verse for this week comes from the book of 1 Kings and that's all the way back in the Old Testament. So before we start our memory verse, I want to tell you a bit about the verse so that we know what we are saying when we say the verse. So our memory verse comes from the same passage as our lesson does, our lesson about Elijah. Now, Elijah was a man who loved God very, very much, and God also loved Elijah very much. But there were some people who lived with Elijah that didn't believe in God. They believed in another God who wasn't real and who was a fake God. So Elijah wanted to show these people that they were wrong and that they were worshipping a God that wasn't real. So he built an altar and he asked God to set the altar on fire so that when the altar was set on fire, the people would see that they were wrong. So one day, Elijah prayed and he asked God to set his altar on fire and when the people saw it, they fell to their faces and they fell down on their knees and faces and saw that they were wrong and that they were worshipping a God that was not real. So they were very, very upset. And when they saw that God had put the altar on fire, they knew that he was real. And they knew that they had been worshipping a fake God. So today, our memory verse is about that. And it is speaking about the people who saw God and saw how great and awesome and that he is really God. Now, if you can go in your Bibles to chapter 18 of 1 Kings. And we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 39. Now, I've got it right down written down on a piece of paper over here and we are going to try to say this verse together and then we are going to say it again and one last time and hopefully it will be in your heads by then all right so on the count of three we're going to start reading together ready one two three when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and said the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And that is from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39. Let's say it one more time altogether because I couldn't really hear you all the way over from my house. So let's say it again. One, two, three. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. 1 Kings 18, verse 39. That was much better. I could hear some of your voices far back in the distance, but I couldn't hear you so well. So let's try to say it one last time. Are you ready? One, two, three. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And that is from 1 Kings 18 verse 39. Well done, everybody. I could hear you really, really well all the way from my house. All right, so please remember that memory verse and remember how awesome and how real our God is. Bye, you guys.
Hey guys, so I hope you're having a crackjacker weekend. For those of you who have been back at school, I hope it was a good one. For those of you who are going back to school next week, I hope you have a great week, guys. And yeah, I, I'm sure you're pretty stoked to see your friends again and just be out of the house, eh? So this week we're going to be diving into scripture of 1 Kings chapter 18. But before we get there, let's just pray for a second and yeah, come to God in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for another week. I want to thank you for another week that you've brought us through, Lord. Lord, for those of us who have been at school or at work, I want to thank you for protecting us for this week, Lord. Lord, for those of us who are going to school or work next week, I ask that you keep your hand of protection over us, Lord, that we can go out and be shining lights for you in this world, Lord, whether it be at school, at university, or at work. Lord, I want to thank you that we can set aside time on a Sunday or whenever we watch this video, Lord, to hear your word and learn more about you. I would ask that whoever hears this video, Lord, that, Lord, you can turn their hearts, Lord, to, to you, Lord, that they can yearn and yearn to grow for you and never stop growing, Lord. Lord, I ask that you speak through me and you help me to speak clearly your word, Lord. Thus, in your name, amen. All right, so as I said earlier, we're going to be in 1 Kings chapter 18, and I'm going to be reading from verse 30, okay? But just to give you guys a little bit of context of what happened before this is Elijah was the only prophet of God at the time. As we read in verse 22 here, where he says, Then Elijah said to them, I am only, I'm the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Okay. And now Baal, everyone believed was their God, right? And, but he wasn't God. The Lord is the only God, okay? And Elijah knows this, but he knows that the people aren't, just gonna, aren't listening to him. And he goes, you're wrong. Baal isn't God. The Lord is God, okay? And as much as he tells, so he goes, okay, let's show them. God, you are the one and only God. And he says to them, okay, guys, let's get two bulls. And you build an altar over there for your God. And ask him to come down and consume the altar, okay? And they do, and they build their altar over there, and they start dancing and chanting around it, and nothing happens. And they continue, and they continue, and they continue, to the extent that they start cutting each other and drawing blood to try and get their God to come down and consume it. But we know, and Elijah knew at the time, that their God isn't real, okay? And Elijah starts taunting them, going, shout louder, maybe he can't hear you. Or maybe he's sleeping. Maybe you see wake him up. Or maybe he's deep in thought. Maybe he's gone to the toilet and he's just busy right now. Okay? And it's just like taunting and taunting them and nothing happens. And after a long while, Elijah says to them, Here, let me show you who God is. Okay? And we pick it up from verse 30 and he says, and I mean from the NIV. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him. And he prepared the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord has come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. He then said to them, Fill four large jugs with water. And put it on the offering, on the wood. Do it again, he said to them. And they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered. And they did it a third time. The water ran down and around the altar and even filled the trench. So now, if you guys want to go make a fire, right? One of the things you really don't want is wet wood. Okay, wet wood just smokes. It doesn't really burn nicely until it's dried out. Okay, but Elijah knows that... God doesn't need anything, okay? God doesn't need to wait for that water to dry, okay? And that wood to dry out, sorry. <laughs> if God wants to set that on fire, he'll set that on fire, okay? The forces of nature do not bound God, okay? God set the forces of nature, okay? And then, at the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, 
answer me so the people know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then fire from the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench, leaving nothing. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Okay? Guys, that to me is absolutely amazing. Okay? They saw the power of God. And they fell down face first and worshipped God. And saying He is and acknowledging Him more instead of worshiping. They acknowledged Him as God. That is amazing, guys. And, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'd love to see that, eh? Like, it's, I love fire, yes. But to see fire coming down from God, that must be an amazing thing to see. Okay? And I'm like, God, why, why can't you do that? Okay? But then I can go and, for instance, I can go look at my fingerprint, right? And my fingerprint goes up and it's swirly over there and swirly over there and swirly over there. But my print, fingerprint is mine. It's different to yours and yours is different even to your parents, okay? And God shows He's amazing, that He is amazing, and that He is God in many different ways. In, in the little things of maybe just that the sun is shining today, okay? Or that the trees are outside, that the grass is green, or maybe it's brown, brown now because of the frost, okay? But that still is an amazing thing to see, okay? So one of the things I want you to do this week is Look at the amazing things God has done in our lives, okay? And thank Him for it, okay? But also, I just want to answer two questions from the passage that I think often come to us and we think of. And the first one is, what is a sacrifice, okay? And we know uh, the prophet Elijah has sacrificed a bull, okay? But a sacrifice is an offering or a gift to God, okay? As an act of worship to Him, Okay? And we learn in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, okay, sorry about stuttering there, is that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, that he gave his life for us, okay, that we have the opportunity to come and know God, okay, that is the ultimate sacrifice. The other question I often think, might think is that, well, what is worship, okay? Worship is putting God first. Okay, and living for Him. And yes, we often think of, yeah, worship is just like maybe singing and dancing. Okay, worshiping God is so much more than that. Yes, those are two aspects of worship. And people will probably say those are the main two. But a thing of living for God each and every day, that is an act of worship to God. Okay, so, and worship and sacrifice go hand in hand. Okay, because often, some things that, yeah, how we worship God often require us to sacrifice something, okay? So, for instance, maybe if you need to want to go to church, you maybe need to sacrifice not being able to play sports on a weekend on that Sunday. Or maybe it's thinking, oh, I can't go do my ballet classes on that Sunday morning because I'm going to church. So we can sacrifice something and go and worship God, okay? So I want to challenge you guys this week. Last one is that, how can you guys worship God, okay? So if you want to draw myself or Auntie Lisa a picture, send us a message on how you guys can worship God, okay? I hope you have a cracker jack a week, guys, and I hope to see you soon. Cheers, guys. During the time and life of the prophet Elijah, drought filled the land. There had not been any rain for years, the Israelites' crops died, their animals died, and they became hopeless. This drought was sent from God because of their disobedience and that of their evil king Ahab. King Ahab hated God. He also hated Elijah, who was a prophet and messenger of God. One day, Elijah came before King Ahab to tell the king what God was going to do. When the king saw Elijah, he became very angry and said, What do you want? You are just a troublemaker. Elijah looked at the king with stern disappointment and said, No, King Ahab, you've rejected God and followed idols. 
God is going to show you that he alone is God. Bring all your false and wicked prophets with you and meet me on top of Mount Carmel. On Mount Carmel, Elijah built an altar to the one true God, Yahweh. He told Ahab's wicked prophets to build their own altar to their false god, Baal. Then Elijah said, Here are the rules. You put a bull on your altar, and I will put one on mine. Then we both pray. I will pray to the true living God, Yahweh, and you can pray to your false god, Baal. If Yahweh is the real true God, he will send fire down from heaven and burn up the altar. If Baal is a real god, he will send fire from heaven and burn up your altar. Then the contest began. The wicked false prophets of Baal started first. They prayed, yelled, shouted, and even started hurting themselves. But nothing happened. Then they decided to shout louder, cry louder, and dance more. But still, nothing happened. Baal was not a real god, and all the people of Israel saw this. Then it was Elijah's turn. To make sure all the people saw this miracle, Elijah took 12 buckets of water and threw it on the altar. The altar was now soaking wet, making it impossible for a fire to burn on top of it. Then Elijah started to pray. Lord, show these wicked people that you are the only true living God. Suddenly, the heavens opened up and a mighty column of fire exploded from the sky onto Elijah's altar. As the fire started to burn up the entire altar, the people of Israel became silent. They knew then that Yahweh was the only true God. The people were in shock and fell down on their faces before God. They knew the truth. So they shouted, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. They knew they sinned and asked God for forgiveness. That day, Elijah and the people of Israel chased away and killed the wicked false prophets who hated God. They made sure that these wicked teachers would never again spread the false news about their false gods. Baal was just a piece of stone with no life. But God was the real one true God. And that day, everyone saw God's great power. My hand. 